What's good, YouTube? How y'all doing, man? We're here with a brand new video, bro. We got the weirdest mysteries in NBA history, bro. As you guys know, I reacted to the stupidly expensive thing that Michael Jordan owns. And now we're reacting to this, bro. As y'all know, I'm an NBA fan, bro. I want to kind of introduce just that simple fact that I am a fan into the uh, YouTube channel, bro. So I'm not going to be like reacting to just NBA content, but I definitely just want to throw it in there, bro. See what happens. See if I can spark some because, you know, I'm still new to all this YouTube stuff and I just want to see what works and what doesn't. So, yeah, guys, so this is pretty much what we're going to get into today, bro. Let's get into it. These are the weirdest mysteries uh, in NBA history. And Kobe, first man, up, Kobe. we got the time that the OKC Thunder had an unexplainable encounter 30,000 feet in the air. See, back in 2017, the Thunder were on a flight to Chicago when, all of a sudden, a loud thud echoed across the cabin, and the plane started to shake unnaturally. Oh, this was not turbulence, because when the team landed just an hour later, they discovered something horrifying. The entire nose of their plane was completely caved in, almost as if something or someone had crashed into them. So with the players desperate for answers, Delta Airlines was forced to launch a full-on investigation. And after a few days, the only answer they could provide was, the plane likely encountered a bird while on descent. Yeah, the problem with that theory is, when a plane hits a bird, it gets completely covered in blood. But if you look closely, there's not a single speck on that entire plane. So odds are, we'll never know what truly happened to the thunder that night. But at least this was just a one-off event, because NBA players have been getting terrorized for years yeah, at the haunted Skirvin Hotel. What's this? See, legend has it that in the 1920s, the hotel's owner, William Skirvin, locked a maid in a room on the 10th what? floor, and being trapped in a tiny hotel room started to drive her insane. Eventually, she decided to throw herself out the window, what? plummeting over 140 feet to her death. And ever since that day, her ghost has been wandering the hotel, causing all kinds of paranormal activity. Oh, hell no. Hell no. What? Oh, hell no. And when the Knicks reported hearing strange noises throughout the hotel, keeping them up all night long. Oh, and the Bulls man. stayed at the Skirvin a couple weeks later, only for Taj Gibson to see his bathroom door slam shut on its own. But as creepy oh, as man. these incidents were, the scariest encounter came in 2016, when after a night of horror, Meta World Peace shared his traumatic ghost experience with the entire world, saying, the ghost was all over me. I just accepted it. He a little crazy though, I ain't gonna lie. But Metal World Peace is cool ass people. I mean, just based on what he did on the court, he was a little crazy. I don't know if he, you know, up upstairs. He might, he's probably good, but I'm just saying on the court, he was crazy. She touched me all over the place. I'm taking the ghost to court for touching me in the wrong places. Damn, now I wanna visit the Skirvin. Now, as creepy as the Skirvin Hotel is, at least everyone made it home to their family. Cause the disappearance of retired NBA player Lorenzen Wright has mystified investigators for years. July 18th, 2010, 7.30 p.m. Lorenzen Wright was visiting his ex-wife, Shira, in Memphis, Tennessee, to help put his kids to bed. And with night swiftly approaching, he decided to step out the front door and head home. July 19th, 12.18 a.m., just four hours later, a haunting 911 call comes in from an unknown number at an unknown location. Georgetown 911, where's your emergency? Hello? Hello? July 22nd, 72 hours after the phone call, Lorenzen Wright is officially reported missing after no one had seen or heard from him in three days, sparking a statewide police investigation no, just, into his crazy. disappearance. Those sound, those sound like gunshots. And it wouldn't be until six days later that the world would finally get some answers. Because on July 28th, Lorenzen's body was found riddled with bullet holes, rotting in a nearby forest, escalating this from a disappearance case up to an FBI murder investigation. Police probed the crime scene, searched Lorenzen's house, and interrogated his family and friends. 
desperately searching for clues. But after seven years, nothing concrete was ever found. So it seemed like whoever murdered Lorenzen would remain a mystery forever. Until November of 2017, when the case was cracked wide open, thanks to an eerie discovery by the FBI. See, the feds found a gun at the bottom of a lake in nearby Mississippi. Uh. This gun not only matched the bullets found on Lorenzen, but it also tracked back to a guy named Billy Ray Turner, who just so happened to be best friends with Lorenzen's ex-wife, Shira. All right, so bro. with police and possession- See what I'm saying, bro? See what I'm saying, bro? Like, I ain't trying to, you know, RIP to, you know, Lorenzen, bro, but like, bro, this is why, bro, you can't trust females and they friends, bro. This is, bro, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, this guy probably got jealous and ended up doing what he did, bro. And you are a dumbass. Like, I just don't. I, I don't get it, bro. I don't Possession get it. of the murder weapon and two prime suspects. Shira and Billy were arrested just a month later. Hold on. She had to do with it, too? Oh, my God. And in July of 2019... A year and a half Yo, after fighting the charges, you got you Ren got a son with this guy, bro. Like I just, bro. Renzen's ex-wife Shira finally confessed to orchestrating the murder. But as horrifying as Lorenzen's story is, this Yo. is not the only mystery involving a dead NBA player. Because one of the most iconic NBA video games is being haunted by the ghost of an NBA star. See, back when NBA him? Jam was first released in 1993, one of the playable characters was Net star Drazen Petrovic. But sadly, a few months after the game was released, Drazen tragically died in a car accident. And ever since that fateful day, something ominous has been happening to NBA Jam. I mean, just listen to what their founder, Mark Termel, had to say. When nobody's playing, would every once in a while would just uh, call out that. Petrovic. You know, Petrovic, just out of the blue, and so what? Hold you know, on. Petrovic, you know, when nobody's playing, would every once in a while, would you, in the attract mode, you know, when nobody's playing, would every once in a while, would just call out Petrovic, you know, Petrovic, just out of. The I just don't believe this, bro. This is a machine, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's a machine. I just don't blue, get it. And so, you know, people caught on to that. That there was some felt like a haunted, you know, haunted yeah. game. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know how that glitch could happen or what, you know, it doesn't make any sense. You damn right it don't. Petrovich. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Nah. That's a weird... <laughs> nah, that's dead funny. ...stuff going on with this game. But what's even more weird is the NBA player that vanished into thin air and was never seen again. What? See, back in 1999, Piston center Bison Dele retired from the NBA mm. to pursue his lifelong dream of traveling the world. So he purchased a boat named a Hakuna Matata and spent the next three years sailing the Pacific Ocean. But on July 6, 2002, something went horrible. Telling you, bro. Wrong. I'm telling you, bro. Water is a dangerous force. place, bro. Without this, wouldn't be possible. Appreciate you guys very much. I don't like being in, in, the, in none of those oceans, none of them, bro. Like, it's a dangerous place out there. With his brother Miles and girlfriend Serena, Bison set sail from the port of Tahiti and was never seen again. When no one had heard from Bison in over a week, an investigation was launched by the Tahitian police. And a few days later, they learned that the Hakuna Matata was seen docking at Tahiti just days after Bison had last set sail. Problem was, the only person that got off the ship was Bison's brother, Miles. And when police tried tracking him down, he was nowhere to be found. So with no leads to go off of, police decided to interrogate Miles' close friends to try and find some answers. And according to Miles' ex-girlfriend, Miles admitted to attacking Bison on the boat, which is exactly what investigators needed to hear to get a warrant for Miles' arrest. So the feds started their search, trying to hunt him down. And on September 15th, 2002, they received an anonymous tip saying that Miles was spotted on a beach in Tijuana, Mexico. So mm. police swarmed the scene, expecting to make an arrest, only to find Miles in a drug-induced coma, barely oh. clinging on to life. And shortly after, he was pronounced dead. Wow. Just like that, the investigation was over. And whatever actually happened to Bison 
remains an unsolved mystery. So they never got answers to this for it. Day. Now, that, I feel bad for that mother though, bro. She lost two kids, bro. Now, as strange as this story was, the mysteries are only gonna get weirder from here. Cause there's something so dark about Michael Jordan that it just might have forced him to retire from the NBA. See, in 1993, right after Jordan had won his third ring, he mysteriously left the NBA with no explanation, causing fans around the world to yeah, wonder this was why. this a little weird, well, I ain't it lie. turns out that Jordan was hiding something scandalous. This was a little weird, See, back in 1991, lie. the FBI was investigating a criminal named Slim Buhler when they came across a $57,000 check made out to Slim, signed by Michael Jordan. And after some interrogation, it was revealed that the check was to pay off some gambling debt that Michael owed. Yeah, Jordan was getting mixed up with some real sketchy people. And not long after, his name popped up in another shady scenario. Cause police in North Carolina were investigating the murder of Eddie Dow, a notorious gambler. When they located $108,000 in checks, signed by Michael Jordan. And once again, Jordan admitted writing these checks because of a gambling debt. So after the second incident, the NBA opened an investigation into Jordan's gambling history to make sure nothing yeah. illegal was going Jordan was a huge gambler from what I hear, but I wasn't alive in this time, bro. But I don't know, bro. He just, like I said, bro, he just had too much money, bro. Like, God. And ultimately, they found no wrongdoing. Jordan wasn't punished, and he promised to not get involved with shady gamblers again. Until 1993, when another gambler came forward and claimed that Jordan owed him $1.2 million. What? So in response, the NBA launched another investigation into Jordan. But this time, there was no conclusion to the investigation. Because shortly after, Jordan announced his retirement and the investigation mysteriously went away. Leaving fans wondering if it was all just a part of a secret deal he made with the commissioner to avoid an NBA suspension for gambling. Now, we might never know if this was true or not, but Jordan was allowed back in the league just a year later, so it didn't turn out too bad for him in the end. But I can't say the same for the Sacramento Kings, cause the mystery of what happened in the 2002 playoffs cost the Kings an NBA championship. Yeah. See, back in 2002, the Kings were squaring off against the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, when in the fourth quarter of game six, with Sacramento just one win away from taking the series, mm -hmm. something weird started happening. The referees started calling all kinds of questionable fouls on the Kings. And to make things even weirder, they started calling all kinds of questionable fouls on the Kings. Uh -huh. Started happening. That's a pick, the referees bro. started calling all kinds gotta, of questionable fouls. As a matter of fact, I gotta go back and watch this game because the fact that I'm watching this right now, bro. Like I, I know, I know what happened to the whole screw job and everything, but I need more. Questionable like. fouls on the Kings. And to make things even weirder, they also kept missing obvious fouls on the Lakers, almost as if they wanted the Lakers to win. And because of all these foul calls, the Lakers ended up shooting an NBA playoff record, 27 free throws in the fourth quarter alone. So LA 27, bro? LA went on to win game Yo, six. What? And after the dub, people became really suspicious of the refs. The Kings coaches, NBA reporters. I mean, a politician even wrote a letter to the commissioner demanding an investigation into this. But despite the outrage, the series went back to LA, the Lakers eliminated the Kings, and the whole incident was put to rest. Until 2008. See, former referee Tim Donaghy was facing a prison sentence for illegally betting on games he officiated. And right before his sentencing, he wrote a letter saying that game six between the Lakers and Kings was rigged by the refs, arguing that it was in the NBA's best interest to help the Lakers make it to another finals. And when this letter went public, the NBA's commissioner tried to silence Donaghy, saying his accusations were baseless and were a cheap attempt at getting his prison sentence lowered. So to this day, it's still unclear which side was telling the truth. But look, I, there's one I think it's final clear. I think story it's clear what happened. that's even weirder. Because what if I told you that the legendary Yao, Yao Ming might have okay. been literally created by the Chinese government? Yeah. What? See, in the 1950s, China saw the rising popularity of the NBA. 
and legend has it that they decided to try and create the next basketball superstar. What is that supposed to mean? So their first mean? move was to make a national decree, demanding that every woman above 5'9 and every man above 6'6 must play basketball oh. for the country. And this one law led to the discovery of 6'3 female Feng Fengdi and 6'7 male Yao Ziwen. The two players that Chinese officials thought had the perfect genetics to create the next basketball phenom. Oh. So allegedly, China's government forced these two to marry and have a kid, giving birth to Yao Ming. And after growing twice as fast as the average kid, 13-year-old Yao was already six foot six, but it still wasn't tall enough for the Chinese government. And according to Yao's childhood doctors, they started feeding him experimental growth hormones, all in an attempt to make Yao grow even taller. And they worked, cause by the time Yao became an adult, he was standing at a ridiculous seven foot six, guaranteeing him a spot in the NBA and helping the Chinese government achieve their ultimate goal, Yo, creating a basketball monster. But you know what my ultimate goal is? For you to click on this video right here. These are times nah, NBA players that, lost millions nah, of- that's crazy. That whole Yao Ming situation is wild, bro. I'm not gonna lie, but. Y'all was tough, bro, but that explains all the issues in his legs and stuff, bro. His injuries, because he couldn't stay healthy at all. He was like, he was really, um, he was too tall, bro. It just, it was too much weight. But that's the end of the video, bro. This video was actually mad cool. Uh, if y'all want me to keep reacting to these, bro, let me know, bro. Make sure to like and subscribe. I got some content coming for y'all real soon, bro. Just working on editing that and putting it out. But the upload streak continues. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all, bro. I'm going to catch y'all. Peace.